I might just start by asking uh, Charlie, uh, early morning wake up, I gather. Uh, how did you hear the news? Our landline in the living room started ringing at, at 4.30. And um, initially I was, uh, well, I was irritated that uh, also being recognized uh, sort of with this prize, uh, it started to sink in that this might actually be real. Uh, so yeah, I think yellow fever um, really put us in a good position because of the similarities in the type of virus. Um, Thank you. Uh, the press conference is now concluded. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Well, guidance for young virologists, I guess we're, we're sort of in the middle of a sort of a major uh, sort of virology education. To, as Rick said, with these cocktails of inhibitors that we have today now that can cure more than 95% of the people that are uh, infected with this virus. Uh, so this is, again, some of the targets that I think people are most excited about um, for SARS-CoV-2 and preventing COVID-19 are, are essentially um, conceptually uh, the sort of same targets that turned out to win the war against hepatitis C, uh, at least in terms of, of treatments. So, uh, you know, people would love to have a cure in a week or, some, or a vaccine in a week. I mean, that's not feasible, but the, the speed with which um, I think sort of good therapeutics and, and vaccines will be developed um, for SARS-CoV-2 to prevent COVID-19 is uh, going to be uh, spectacular. Uh, I think the, the gift that they, they gave me was really the freedom to explore. Um, you know, it wasn't like I was, you know, told what to do every day that I, you know, showed up in the lab. Um, you know, they didn't uh, sort of inhibit, they provided guidance, but they didn't inhibit me from, you know, trying uh, things that might have been a little wild and crazy at the time. Uh, 